I'm Mark Sudonik with GSG, and welcome to another episode of GSG Live. Today, our topic is going to be what you need to know when you're going to start an embroidery business. And my guest today is Liz Beavers. She's our embroidery territory manager here at Graphic Solutions Group. Welcome to the show, Liz. So, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Mark, for Fan- having me on. Good. You excited about this? I think this is going to be really valuable to our customers. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We have a wealth of information to share, and and I'm ready. I'm ready to help. Well, let's just kind of, before we dive right into these five main topics, can you tell us what exactly you do for GSG? What is your role as Embroidery Territory Manager? Sure, absolutely. My role as uh, Embroidery Territorial Manager here for the team is to assist with our customers understanding embroidery what equipment is best for them, good practices to have, uh, ways to capture more customers for them to grow their business, and assisting our sales reps out in the field uh, when they have customers they want to go speak to. So you stay pretty busy? Absolutely. Okay, good thing. (laughs) Well, hey, let's go with the first first question. I'm actually going to ask these questions if myself, you know, being a screen printer my whole life, but now I'm thinking about embroidery. So if I was not in this industry at all, and I decided, you know, I see all the restaurants and landscapers and everybody's wearing hats and embroidered golf shirts and golf towels. And I want to think, you know, hey, maybe I want to do this. Like, how do I figure out what my market would be? Where, where would I go? Where would I get the information of, you know, if I want to do, say, like a resort style wear? Do I want to do schools? I just see embroidery everywhere. And I would have no idea where to start. Sure. Yeah. And. All of us go through that. We we look at embroidery and the apparel industry, and we think, you know what? This would be a great opportunity. Sure. Um, the first thing you have to do is find out what and who you already know. What avenues do you already have? Uh, maybe you have some kids that are on the athletic teams in the schools, and you have a, a contact right there okay. to start with. Uh, maybe you have a daughter that's in cheerleading. You have a friend who owns a restaurant. Uh, these are things that you first look at is – okay, who do I already know that I could approach and talk to them about what normally do you order, uh, aprons, hats, quantity? Because all of these questions help narrow down the equipment that you might need. So finding a niche market, you may belong to a club, and that is already your niche right there. And in that club are business owners, and you know that they're already buying apparel. So basically... For instance, I'd network through the people I already know because I have friends, like you said, in clubs. Uh, you know, you have people that, that golf, tennis, everything, and just kind of just get into conversation and ask, hey, where are you getting it now? You know, is, is that an approach you may want to take? Because, uh, you know, so many things online. I know personally I wouldn't want to just start an online business, mm-hmm. but to start small, start local more mm-hmm. or less. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Starting local is the best way. And then uh, your business grows from there because somebody local knows somebody out of town who has a friend, and then your business grows at that point. Okay. You you briefly said, you know, answering those questions, then you you mentioned about what equipment. Now, let's talk about equipment. Now, I don't know anything about embroidery. Now, say I want to do hats, I want to do golf towels, aprons, golf shirts, is there one machine that does all of that? Um, you know, you know. I know with embroidery, all the different colors. So is there machines that do more colors than others? You know, do they have different attachments? Or do I need a different machine for embroidering different, you know, textiles? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, the way you look at it is once you figure out your niche market, okay. you then have the conversation of what products do you normally order? Um, it could be bat bags, hats apparel, jackets, aprons. Once we figure out what our customer potentially is going to want, that helps us go in the direction of which equipment. Okay. Then you have the conversation with your customers. Quantity. Uh, On an average, do you order 50 hats, 144 hats? Uh, Do you order just 12 polos? All of these questions uh, help you realize is it going to be a single head that only does one item at a time? Or maybe I might need to go into a, a forehead uh, or up to maybe a 12 head. These are just great conversations to have okay. when you're going out there. It's always a safe bet. Uh, you can always start with just a single head because you're always going to need that regardless. And that's going to be single head is 
one garment or one product at a time, right? Yes, correct, okay. correct. And then a forehead would be four, and so on up to, say, 12. But you know, my question is, if say I have a forehead, I can only do four of the same thing, right? I can't have two hats on there and two shirts. That's correct. Okay. Um, in most cases, like with ZSK embroidery equipment, uh, you're going to be doing four of the same item at one time gotcha. on a forehead. Okay. Uh, you can always, and here's where another conversation that I always have with customers looking at equipment, you know, we can also, if you're doing a lot of one-offs, maybe get four single heads. Then in that case, we can actually do a cable from your computer to each of those four singles and we can run four individual items at one time oh, okay or we can run for the same thing gotcha so i could literally run say some golf towels on one and run the polo shirts on the other three if i had four Absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Absolutely. And the equipment, one of your other questions was, uh, what equipment do I need if I'm going to be doing hats or uh, polos? All embroidery commercial machines come with the capability of doing all of those. And those you, are all accessories, right? Yes. Like, okay. Yes, and it okay. does come with the equipment. So you have the capability of doing polos. Uh, now we can also do hats. We can okay. do bags. All commercial grade embroidery machines come with everything that you need to get started. I did not know that. Yeah. So now that we've k kind of figured out what equipment I want, I might need, and there's so many equipment out there. If you go to a trade show and you see all the different things, and I really don't know what I'm looking at, where do I go? Who do I talk to about that equipment? You know, now that, you know, I know you, I can turn to you, but how does a customer find that information? You know, just go online, do a search. You know, do you have to go through a distributor for the equipment? You can't go straight to, like, the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's correct. Uh, a lot of people just starting in the industry actually do a lot of their own research before okay. they even talk to a representative. And they'll, they look at equipment, they also look at price. The one, I'll tell you one of the biggest mistakes I made when I first got started is I, too, didn't have much information. And there was no internet to really do your research. You, so you started a while ago? Uh, just a little bit. Ago. Okay. <laughs> Not too long ago. But so one of the things I did is I had a, I was like on a budget. And I just thought, okay, uh, I had my niche market picked out. And I thought, you know, I'm going to get this little machine. Uh, and it was not, I mean, it was a big investment for me at the time, but it really really wasn't. It, okay. And within two months, I figured out I under purchased. Uh, and these are the type of mistakes a lot of people go through is they go by budget. And they say, you know what, I only want to spend, you know, under $10,000 to get started. And right now, that sounds like a lot of money. But with what you get, and with what you have the capabilities of completing is night and day. Uh, when you look at a machine package okay. now a startup package that could be around seventeen thousand. Okay. Okay. You find out very quickly that you under purchased, or the quality of the equipment that you bought doesn't have the motor and the piercing power to go through hats with three D foam or okay. car mats things like this. <laughs> so these are the kind of conversations that I like to have with somebody looking into the industry, but most of them do the research first. Then they start reaching out to whoever's a distributor because okay. you cannot buy straight from a manufacturer. Here in the United States, there's the distributors that you go through, and this is where everyone's taken care of is from the distributor level. Okay, so they should call GSG. Absolutely. You now, you had said about <clears throat> the, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know the terminology, but the, 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 the piercing power of it. That's going to come into play if, like you say, if you're doing 3D foam on hats, is that the same if you're doing like a heavier nylon backpack mm -hmm. or, you know, like a Carhartt jacket? Is that why that's important? Because, you know, they're a lot thicker, a lot more durable than, say, a polyester golf shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the, the motor and the servo motors that are in there, like the ZSK servo motors on our equipment, can go through. Um, we just saw a video where one of our distributors had available where they went through Almost four layers of foam on a hat. Why would you do that? 
because you ju- just just be can? different and okay. you can just to show okay. that the machine the ZSK machines do have that power to go through a lot of substrates. And would that be three D embroidery? Because yes. you mentioned the thumb, so you're to build the three D. You're actually using thumb as your correct me if wrong backing. You know, under the thread is that how that works? Yeah, the 3D foam is actually laid on top of your substrate okay. that you're going to stitch on. And then the stitching goes over the foam, and at the end of the stitching, you just rip off the excess foam, and the rest stays underneath the stitches, gotcha. giving it that raised look. Okay, and it's raised so look. It, it looks like it's raised or puffed off right. of the actual shirt. Okay, now <clears throat> I figured out what I want to start with. You know, if I want to start with, say, a forehead embroidery machine, you know, I'm excited, I got this forehead. And all of a sudden, I have like five or six friends of friends or just friends that want me to do some embroidery work for them, whether it's towels or shirts. But I don't know how to use the equipment. Where do I, is there, is there anywhere I can go to get training, you know, hands on? Um, Because I know there's digitizing involved. You have to set up, you know, everything to what you're going to embroider. Where do I go for that? Is it, you know, I don't think I'd want to do something online but where I could actually get hands-on with the machine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Here at GSG, when a purchase is made of one of our ZSK embroidery machines, one of our service technicians comes out and actually sets up the machine, trains, does the install. By the time they're leaving, you're already producing. Really? You're you're actually (coughs) up and running and going along. Um, There's also phone support that you have to be able to receive. And a lot of times, like here at GSG, we offer FaceTime support as well, and that can eliminate the extra expense of a technician coming out to your location. They can actually just FaceTime you over the phone and get you back up and running if something were to need some assistance. Uh, but we provide all that training. Then we go another step further. After you've had the equipment a couple of months and you're like, you know what, There's I know there's so much more I can do and I can achieve. Okay. Uh, here at GSG, we offer in-house classes. We just had one this week. And our customers come in, it's live, you touch, you feel, and we show you all the new items, new ways to do things, new tools out there to assist you along the way, and how to improve your current embroidery. And always improve. Well, especially since I've never done it before, I'm going to have to have a lot of improvement ahead of myself. Um, Now, at GSG, we have, you know, YouTube channel. We do a tremendous amount of screen print videos, you know, my side, my segment, what I do. Do we do, do we have a lot of embroidery videos also? Are you out there, you know, showing the trends, like what's new or how to do it? How do, how do we do videos on YouTube that encompass embroidery? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel where we show you uh, new ways to do small letters and techniques. Okay. And, uh, a lot of technique videos. We also show new items that have come out, uh, new accessories, clamps holding devices to hold those difficult products like gloves, shoes, uh, doing patches. So there's videos there, and we have a whole list of uh, new videos that are going to be coming out this year as well. Fantastic. I guess I'm going to have to start watching those and not focus on screen so much. (laughs) Uh, Well, I watch (coughs) yours. Okay, that's fair. (laughs) Now that I have my equipment, I know how to run it for now. And, you know, I'm always going to constantly learning. Where do I go and who do I turn to for like all the different consumables? Not necessarily. I know I can go to GSG for my thread and my backing um, and accessories. But w- how do I find out where do I go to get backpacks, hats, golf shirts? You know, I'm not going to go and stop at a retail store to buy that stuff. But, you know, to buy it on a wholesale level. There's so many different hat companies. Is there anywhere I could focus on going and actually getting all my merchandise? Oh, absolutely. And I can't stress enough. Uh, When you're first starting out uh, on the commercial side, there's a lot of uh, trade shows you can attend, but some cater to the hobbyist or somebody that's not really out to run this as a business. Sure. Uh, But if you want to go to a commercial trade show where all the wholesalers are there and you can look around, pick and choose the products you like, the company that you feel comfortable with, and that's going to be the ISS trade shows. You can find them online. Then they're going to have one in Atlantic City on the East Coast. Right. And then GSG also is at the one. Fort Worth. It's in Fort Worth. 
So no matter where you're at in the United States, there is an ISS trade show that it could be closer to you to attend. I highly recommend you go and attend that. And there's a lot of, um, I'll call them smaller regional shows. Do those smaller shows also offer a lot of embroidery or those suppliers, you know, or is it mainly just the big trade shows? The smaller mm-hmm. trade shows, um, like, for example, um, they're located in the Midwest and yes. up north. Uh, those are good to attend, and you will find the wholesalers at okay. those as well. Okay. The ISS shows, to me, are just, they bring out the biggest, the best, uh, and they just bring more for you to look at. But by all means, if, if you can only go to one of the smaller shows, please go there. At least you'll get some of the information, and you can Google and, and look at some of their other products, too. Now, what else, put it this way, what else should I know? You know, I can, I can get the equipment, I can get it installed, I can learn how to run it. But, you know, with starting anything else, there's always some little back things that you miss out. Is there anything with embroidery that isn't going to pop up and surprise me later? Well, some of the things that do come as a surprise, because okay. it <laughs> came as a surprise to That's me, why I I'm can asking. assure you, yeah. is... Uh, when I first got started, I went and I got the complete package, uh, you know, after I made my small wrong investment, okay. and I then went to go get my bigger commercial machine. I went ahead and I got the full package of digitizing. I then found out that was like taking a drink from a fire hose. Oh, geez. It was, I had so much to learn on the machine side, but then digitizing is a whole different animal. Okay. I highly recommend now to customers, you could farm that out to a professional for very little money, get it back, and you're going to double it and charge your customer for that. You're going to get a professional design, okay. and you're staying busy running your equipment. Not sitting behind a computer figuring out how to digitize. Right, exactly. Okay. Uh, so in this case, uh, when you first start out, don't ne- you don't necessarily have to jump into the whole thing of digitizing, but you do at least need to have lettering with editing capabilities so that when you do get a digitized okay. design back you can quickly change it from 2023 to you know 2024 uh, on the customer's logo you can make those changes monograms and so much there's really the limitation i guess with embroidery is sometimes or mo- a lot of times customers would come in with a business card oh. and the <laughs> bottom line of text okay. said you know uh, Fort Worth IPD ESP dot org dot gov okay. 1995, right? Okay. Something was on there that was like over 26 letters. And it's that big. Yeah. Okay. And they want it to look that clean, that crisp on a left chest, which is only going to be about three inches gotcha. long. And they can't uh, tell the difference between printing and embroidery. Okay. So a lot of things, it's not your limitation. It's the customer's wants gotcha. that limit embroidery with needle and thread. So you just have to be able to educate your customer. But pretty much, if you can put a hoop on it, you can stitch it. And, you know, you took it a different route. I thought you were going to go, I was I was thinking, like, some real, like, sheer or thin garments. Like, I've seen some things that they look puckered all the way around it. And that's what mm-hmm. I mean. Are you limited by what you can do? Because I've seen some really thin shirts and it just, to me, it didn't look clean. It mm-hmm. was, it was puckered or wrinkled all the way around it. Mm-hmm. So are there some things that you should stay away from? Well, um, and again, I'm going to answer that probably in a different direction okay. than you're expecting, but okay. uh, when you have embroidery and it's all puckering and, and everything is just all messed up around it, it's, it's not the machine's limitation. It's the knowledge of the operator. Okay. They're either, their tensions are either too tight on the machine or they're using the wrong stabilizer, also known as backing. So that's where the education for you <coughs> is very strong when you first start out so that you don't produce something that has a lot of puckering. So you have different backings depending what you're, yes. what, what you're embroidering? Because mm-hmm. now, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm thinking the backing is that white kind of, fabric I see behind, you know, like mm-hmm. a left chest or something like that. Right. So why do you have different ones? Uh, we Are have the differences or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's really, when you're doing embroidery, 
um, and you're looking at different backings and stabilizers, and you go to even our website, okay, we have like 15 different flavors to choose from in in one particular product. And that's because our stabilizer, our backing is for people, not just embroiderers. Those of us that are in embroidery, there's probably only three different weights of backing that okay. we need to really work with. And the lighter one is for lighter sheer fabrics. The uh, heavier gotcha. one is for those that pucker more uh, or have high stitch counts. So it's uh, that's why there's like three major sizes and weights that you should have. So what the backing does is it, <coughs> it stabilizes the fabric or the garment, correct? That's correct. So you can bore it. Now, do you need to do backing if you're doing hats? You know, because some hats are they're thicker. Mm -hmm. They have that stiffer insert or something. Mm -hmm. So do you still have to put backing in a hat, or can you go without it? Y you know, and that's kind of a, a, a Chevy Ford <coughs> okay. type of question there because, okay. honestly, um, what what's behind a hat that makes it stiff is called buckram backing. Okay. And it doesn't have a smooth surface. It has hills and valleys, little holes. Gotcha. I'm a firm believer that you use a cap backing because it gives your bobbin stitches something flat and stable to attach to and so that your top stitching is clean. That's my opinion, and that's what I use. But I've gone into some shops that, since it has a buckram backing and it's stiff, they, don't use they it. just feel like, okay. hey, I don't need that. So it's really, it's, I, I'm a firm believer that you use it. Okay. So again, cause I don't know, and maybe some people watching don't know, you had said about it's smoother for the bobbin. So that is going to be like, say on the inside or underside of your garment or hat, and then your needles and your top threads on top. So they feed off the bobbin like a sewing machine does. Exactly. Okay. Exact same process as a sewing machine. Your needle goes down, it grabs the bobbin, and basically, so now you have something holding your top thread to okay. the product. And so that's why I firmly believe in backing on hats so that it's a smooth surface that the bobbin thread is attached to. You know, since I'm familiar with, you know, printing, with, with screen printing and volumes and pieces per hour, you know, now that, you know, I have my equipment in, you know, we got a forehead and we can do four hats at a time or, or tiles at a time. How do you determine or how do you figure out the length of time it takes to embroider something? Like, what is that based on? Because I've seen some, like you mentioned, like left chest. I've seen even like our GSG logo. Then I've seen some really intricate, larger designs, which I assume take a lot more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. And the way it's based is stitch count. Okay. So if... Um, your design has 5,000 stitches, and you run your machine at 900 stitches a minute. Okay. You can pretty much calculate. But then you always add a little bit to that for thread breaks or changing out a bobbin. So you do add to that, and then you can get a pretty good idea as to how many runs you're going to get in an hour with this particular product. And that brings up a whole nother topic okay. for another series is how much do I charge? Okay. And that one will take... A good while to explain because there's misconception um, okay. that people are charging by the thousand stitches uh, that they're in a design, but that's not taken into account. Your hooping time, you adding the colors to the machine, and your prep time. So, but we'll leave that for another. So discussion. I shouldn't just go ten percent less than the guy down the street. No, no. Okay. Uh, definitely, definitely. Don't actually do that. figure know what my costs are. That's correct. We now, have to figure out your cost. I don't know if this is going to be a different topic or a different time, but you mentioned about like thread breaks. So say I'm stitching some hats and I have a thread break. Is that hat ruined or do I, can I just re-thread the machine and start where it stopped? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, because <coughs> thread breaks are going to happen. Okay. You know, that that's, just going to happen. So what we do is we uh, re-thread. Then we have a, a button on the machine where we can back up a couple of stitches. Oh, really? Because by the time your thread breaks, it, it's the needle... It's already forward. Yeah, okay. maybe about three stitches. So we back up and then just stitch right over it, and nothing's loose. It's all knotted in. So, yeah, absolutely. So it's not a tragic loss in the world that right. the blue thread broke and... Okay, that's, right. that's easy good to fix. know. Very easy fix. Now, 
I guess the one of the, the last things I have is, you know, how how do you kickstart your embroidery business? How do you how do you how do we've talked about networking and finding business, but how do I really start this and get it off the ground? And once I'm, I'm confident and I'm running, how do I get my name out there? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. One of the main things is when you first were doing your business plan and you were looking at who your target market is, of course, we come up with a name. Okay. Uh, we have got to be creative. Sure. What is our name going to be? And I firmly believe that your name should have something included as to what it is you do, okay. like uh, Mary Ann's monograms. Okay. That tells me you do mm-hmm. monograms, okay. right? So when you come up with that name, then I highly um, firm believer that you go to all the social media sites and see if that name is still av- is available because you don't want to come up with a name that, you know, somebody else already has it on social media. And That's they don't be do good one. business and you don't want that. Correct. Okay. Exactly. Then um, you get your name out there. You just start plugging away. Take pictures each day of something you did, something you finished in your shop, something, a neat hat that you did, and start plugging that. Uh, then all those people that you... Uh, wanted to have contacts okay. with, you can take some of your products to them to show the quality sure. and say, you know what, we're ready to do your aprons now. Uh, this is, take a look at this. Then as you start getting local businesses as your customer and you had a pro digitize it, you ran the product, you ask that customer if they'd let you keep a sample in your portfolio. Then the more Local customers oh, show go the to. work you actually did for them. Right. So a little advertising for them too. Exactly. Okay. And and then since it's local, the next local person's going to go. Oh yeah. I know. Uh, that. Hey, you know we're with Allstate. We actually do all the insurance for all their their v- catering vehicles. Yeah. You know what? They support me. I'm going to support you as well. So it just starts picking up from there. But social media right now is huge. So I would okay. definitely have Facebook pages uh, and some of the other pages get out there. And I know. We had, the f- we had five topics that we t- discussed, but I, I want to kind of throw one more in there because, you know, I've seen a lot of businesses start small and kind of blow up overnight or expand. With embroidery, when do you know that is the time to go bigger equipment or add more equipment? You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to be embroidering 18 hours out of the day. Right. You know, it. when do you know that you're on that next level to make that that jump? That's when you look at your pieces um, that you're getting on an average. Okay. So uh, I'll do some simple math. We had two single heads. We started with two singles. But I'm now getting the average orders of 24 pieces. I mean, that's usually the minimum, it seems like, now my customers okay. are bringing in. Well, a forehead is probably where I need to look. And this way I can produce it faster. And I can get it out the door. One thing when my customers come in, I've had them approach me and say, yeah, I really think I need a six head. And they're just starting out. So when I start asking the questions, why a six head? I then find out, okay, your average pieces are anywhere from 12 to 24. Yeah, I think maybe a four head. I'm not trying to talk anybody out of of machinery, sure. but I don't want to oversell. Okay. But I also don't want a customer to be under purchasing. And like I did when I first started, uh, let's start off with something that we need. But the way to find out when it's time is when you know you are putting in, you know, 12 hours a day and it's on two single heads and your average order is coming in that can justify a multi. Okay. It's time for that multi head. So basically, I don't want to under purchase and going forward, I don't want to upgrade too early on my machine. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, you know, Liz, I want to thank you for being on the show. I think this was great. Hopefully, it's really informative for our customers. I know we covered our five topics or five questions, and we added a couple more as we went through. But, you know, I hope to have you back on the show. Maybe we can do one on different tips and tricks or, you know, different specialty kind of embroidery. If that sounds good to you, I'd love to have you back. I'd love to come back. I'd love to share more ideas. Fantastic. Well, everybody, I want to thank you for watching. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on all social media. And for more information on embroidery, embroidery equipment, all the consumables and supply, make sure you visit GoGSG.com. And thanks for watching. (laughs) 